Hello, welcome back to another episode on Red Foxy. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Wife left for a fair partner. D-Day was early September. I, 42 male, discovered wife, 36 female, on security cameras bringing AP into our bedroom. We have a 5-year-old son. We were together for 12 years and married for 6. I made all the mistakes. Begged pleaded and cried. Two weeks she stayed in the house going back and forth between wanting to work it out and then more discovery of her contacting AP. Finally she moved out to be with AP and I served her with a separation agreement. She got angry about it and countered with her own attorney to go straight for the D. She has an enabling family which is probably why she is the way she is. I've learned a ton from this sub and implemented it. Been no contact for at least two weeks, I should have started sooner, except to talk about our kid. We have joint custody, and she is being a good parent, but she has introduced the AP to our son. Nothing I can do about it says the lawyer. She is going to get half of my 401k, half of the house. I have to explain to my son why we have to move out of the only home he's known. She is telling everyone that she is leaving an abusive relationship. But a lot of our mutual friends see through her BS. She is telling our son that we both ended the marriage. I know when he is old enough he will be able to see the truth. I will never lie to him, but until the divorce is finalized I don't want to risk being accused of alienation. I have PTSD from the discovery of them in our bed. Luckily I have had a lot of good support from friends and family. Got therapy and meds for nightmares, Prozosin, it works, and Lexapro to help me get over this hump. Walking for 30 minutes twice a day. I've made way more progress than I ever thought I would at two months out, but still a long way to go. So far she is not engaged in any cake-eating behavior. Except for the first couple of weeks. I think this is an exit affair. We did have problems in the marriage. She said she felt unloved and like I never wanted to go places with her. She delivered the I've been hurting a long time line. She shows zero remorse or empathy during the whole ordeal. I wanted desperately to believe that she was in limerence, but I know now that it doesn't really matter if she is or not. Cheating is black and white and I can never trust her again. It feels like such a tragedy, but it's true. I'm 42 and I can't imagine finding another relationship at my age and with a kid and a cheating co-parent that I have to stay in contact with. Update, it's been over 5 months since cheating wife moved out to be with AP. Divorce will be finalized within the week. 50-50 custody and I'm keeping the marital house after paying her out. I've been on Lexapro for 2 months which helped a lot but is starting to lose its effectiveness. For about 2 months I have been relatively happy. Going out with friends to mingle on my no kid nights. No tears mostly, but now the tears are becoming a little more frequent and stronger in intensity. Intrusive thoughts and all that. She has not once shown any sense of remorse or even regret. I guess she's still high on fog chemicals. I shouldn't care but I do sometimes. I wish she would return to the person I married, but I know it won't happen. I am working on letting go every day but it is still hard. My six-year-old has told me on a few occasions how he wishes mom and dad didn't live in separate houses, and that is hard to hear. She brings the AP around him, and honestly that is the hardest part about all this. Mother of my child is comfortable bringing the man she destroyed our family with, a stranger, around our child, while simultaneously shouting my son is my number one priority. I try to remain ignorant of her social life, but people slip up and tell me sometimes. I know she's Facebook official with AP has taken their relationship public, even though we aren't even divorced yet. I saw a pic of them together on AP's Instagram profile. I was just scrolling and he came up as a suggestion. That was an unpleasant surprise that had me crying for a bit, but I bounced back. I also found out that AP is still married which had me gut laughing. It makes the cheating seem so much more foolish and immature when they cheat with someone who is already in a relationship, and don't have the courage to end it like an adult. I have not tried to reach out to AP's spouse, as from what I hear she lives in another country and no longer speaks to AP. Wonder why? I have to go to her apartment occasionally, since we co-parent. I cry almost every time I go over there. I try not to but the tears just come out. She is completely over it I guess because she always seems so confused by my tears. She'll text after I leave are you okay? As if to say are you still upset about that old cheating business? Get over it. It was a long time ago. She takes no responsibility for her actions. The cheating was just an appropriate response to the issues with our marriage, in her mind. People keep warning me about the Hoover, but she has not shown a single hint of cake eating even with all the serious consequences she is experiencing, including NC. Still fogged out I guess. It could happen if their relationship ends, but it doesn't really matter. Even if she wanted to come back, there is no way I could ever trust her again. 
I just want her to come to her senses for my son at this point. I would like for her to break out of the fog so she can make better decisions for him. She used to be so much different. Or at least she acted so much differently. Now I feel like I'm dropping my kid off with a spoiled 36-year-old teenager. All in all, things are getting better. Instead of crying all day every day, I'll go a whole week with no tears. My relationship with my son is blossoming. I used to be so angry all the time when she was still living with us. Now that she is gone, life at home is so much more peaceful. I can't remember the last time I got frustrated with him. I remember blaming myself all the time for our marriage issues and she would never take any responsibility for any of it. It was always my temper, my neglect of her needs, my wanting to play video games. I admit those things are real problems, but she never took responsibility for her own mistakes and deflected and gaslit me constantly. Now it's dawning on me just how much of the marital issues were her immaturity and inability to self-reflect, or admit fault. She was defensive and cruelly critical and contemptuous those last few weeks leading up to D-Day. I'm making emotional progress, but it is definitely a journey. There are still thoughts that weight heavily on my mind and heart about my son and how all of this is going to damage him, and how much garbage she is going to fill his head with. She is already lying to him about the circumstances surrounding our split. Me and daddy both ended the marriage. I'm confident when he grows up he will see through her lies. And if he asks I'll tell him the truth. Story 2. Still wondering if I should stay. I haven't posted or even lurked in a long time. I suppose I felt like I just wanted to focus on me and my marriage without distraction. It was blah. I was doing great personally, but I felt like my husband, the cheater, was my roommate. Occasionally, we'd have a discussion about things, but nothing really changed. I've been depressed for about a year, not because of my marriage, but because I despise where we live. Well, now we are moving, and so I'm happy about that. Okay, I'm running on and should get to the point. It took over a year and a half after D-Day for my husband to cut all communication with his AP. We moved over 1,000 miles away, so it was just texts, DMs, whatever. In March 2020, I thought he had finally stopped. Two weeks ago he was on his way home from a trip to the city we are moving to, and he texted me that he was in the middle seat, so he probably shouldn't continue writing porn for me. What? This man has never in our 32 years of marriage said a single dirty thing to me. To her? Yeah, that was kind of their thing. I texted back, who are you writing porn for? He insisted it was me, but. Just forget he said anything. I was physically shaking from the trigger. That night in bed, he began to tell me about all the fantasies he had about me while he was gone. Excuse me, you mean while you weren't texting or calling me? I was completely floored. We have not had SX in 9 months, and it was sparse before that. I'm still wondering if he's lying. So tonight I decided to snoop. I haven't in a really long time because I thought he had turned a corner, and I really, really want to trust him. His old laptop was in his office. He's traveling again, so I plugged it in and logged on. He doesn't know that I know the password. It's connected to the cloud, so I can see things from his other devices. Check notes. Yep, there's the porn he said he was writing on the day he said he was. No names are mentioned, but he does mention beautiful hair, which he tells me I have, I humbly agree. His AP has dreadlocks, but maybe? He also mentions a sheer nightgown. I haven't worn a nightgown since I was about eight. He knows that. Maybe. He's an idiot. Okay, here's the real kicker. I click on Safari and look at the history. On Sunday, he was looking at his AP's Pornhub page, according to his phone. Yeah, she started doing porn since D-Day. Charming. So three questions, do I tell hubby I was snooping and found what I did? Do I have a real come to Jesus meeting and question the porn he wrote and his internet habits? Do I continue to forgive this man who has broken my heart into a million pieces but whom I still want to work it out with? That sounds so stupid when I write it but I am sure many of you understand where I am. Tia.